I haven't read this article, but I mean, let's just let's take a second and appreciate that title. Women are disproportionately hurting our country. Yikes. <laughs> now, when was this written, you ask? 2004, 1983? I don't know. It was written August 30th, 2022. <laughs> let, let me read you that title one more time. Women are disproportionately hurting our country. Dennis Prager is one of those people. He just like wants to be known for saying really stupid things. But the reason why he doesn't have as much clout as other right wing commentators, uh, despite the Prager U stuff because of the funding for that. But the reason why as a commentator, he's less successful is because he is boring as shit. Nobody wants to listen to Dennis Prager. It's like he's falling asleep. Like I'm talking about Dennis Prager and Poopy is bored. He's trying to like, you know, um, dig in his little chair there. Nobody wants to hear about Dennis Prager. You good, Poopy? He, he's, that's his cue. He's telling me to stop. He doesn't like Dennis Prager. But let's dive in a little bit. I haven't pre-read this, so if it has any yikes takes, then you've been warned. But let's, let's see what he has to say. I'm sure he's making a very um, persuasive and cogent argument. When I was in college, I read a book by George Gilder, one of the wisest thinkers of the last half century, titled Naked Nomads, which had a deep impact on me. It was about single men and all the pathologies associated with them. For example, Gilder drove home the point that the biggest factor concerning violent crime was that it is overwhelmingly committed by single men. While there was no danger, I would say no chance that I would commit a violent crime, though I was at the time single. This fact, along with others in the book, made me a lifelong advocate of marriage. Okay, what if there's like other factors that lead to violent crime, such as socioeconomic conditions, poverty, other things? Um, no, it's just if you're single, you're going to be a criminal. Okay, maybe statistically... That's what this person argues, but aren't you like a little bit more intellectually curious where you're like, maybe it's not that simple. No, it's Dennis Prager. Of course he's not. I also came to uh, realize that raising good men was the most important thing society could do. Uh, if it doesn't, the male propensity to physical aggression and predatory sexual behavior will wreak havoc. Therefore, raising boys to control their natures is fundamental to society avoiding chaos. So he's starting off trying to pin blame on men, but really it's women who are disproportionately ruining the country. Over the course of a lifetime, however, I have come to realize that while society was right about males, it was wrong about females. Whether spoken or unspoken, most people thought that girls just didn't need to be raised to control their natures nearly as much as boys did. Okay, we're getting into some really like oof territory here and i don't know where the fuck he's gonna go but right now if you just stopped right here i can't imagine what he's gonna get into rape apologia uh essay apologia i have no clue but oof it's true that females are not inclined to violence or predatory sexual behavior as men are but this hardly means that girls and women don't have to learn to control their natures okay how so on the contrary, as I have been telling parents for many years now, they need to teach their daughters to control their natures just as much as they teach their sons to do so. Okay, when you say control their natures, what exactly do you mean? Maybe hold, specify here, but that sounds really weird. Have you ever heard a normal human being say, hey, are you teaching your daughter to control their natures? I'd say, what the fuck are you talking about? What do you mean control their natures? Like stop farting too frequently? Like what does that mean? Specifically, girls have to learn to control their emotions. Oh, okay. Not guys, though. Not guys. I mean, he supports the president, Donald Trump, who just threw a temper tantrum on Truth Social the other day, where he made like 60 plus posts boosting QAnon, sharing fake Ivanka tweets. Um, That's pretty emotional, is it not? So guys don't have to control their emotions, just girls? Can guys never get overly emotional? I'm trying to figure out like, what's the point? Why is this, as he claims in the article, um, hurting the country. Government couldn't function if women were too emotional. Like, like, I'm just trying to figure it out. Like, you can be emotional and there could still be good outcomes. For example, like, you can care so much about healthcare that it makes you feel emotional when you think about all of the unnecessarily, uh, unnecessary deaths that you fight for that particular policy of single payer. So I feel like emotion isn't inherently bad. It's just, it's part of the human experience. So I feel like he's going to really have to do a lot of argumentation you need statistics you need anecdotes you need um macro data meta analyses but do we think that uh dennis prager is going to provide us with that of course not of course not 
Just as the male sexual drive and violent impulses can overwhelm their conscious and their ability to think and act rationally, emotions can do the same thing in girls and women, overwhelm their conscious and their ability to think and act rationally. Holy shit, this is... Wow. I, I'll just keep reading. However, it should be obvious that at least two generations of parents, especially among the well-educated, did not teach many of their daughters to control their emotions and think rationally. Maybe it's because people who are more well-educated don't actually view the opposite sex as inferior or defective inherently because um, of some dumb stereotype that you believe in till this day. Again, as if men aren't fucking emotional. Like, to be violent, is that not inherently an emotional, you know, um, thing to do? Like, I just, like, what a fucking idiot. The result is that women are disproportionately active in doing damage to our society. <laughs> How do you come to this conclusion? How do you come to this conclusion? Holy shit. The most obvious example is education. American schools teach less and, and indoctrinate more than ever before. How so? What, because they're teaching history? Is that indoctrination, just getting facts? Well, facts don't care about your feelings, dipshit. Big city public and most private schools are damaging young Americans to an extent and in ways no one imagined just a few years ago. Young children are prematurely sexualized. They are, for example, exposed to drag queen story hour. Oh, okay, so that's the problem. In class and in local libraries from the age of five, these feature a man dressed as a woman reading and dancing for them. Oh, no! He'd rather them read the Bible where it talks about God committing genocide and how that's good because he promises to never do it again. Remember Noah's Ark? That's a really wholesome uh, story that's told to children. But like, you need to, first of all, prove that there's a correlation between indoctrination and children being overly sex sexualized and women being overly emotional. And once you determine that there's a correlation, you have to prove that there's a causal link but he's not going to do that. He's just saying, well, like, look, they're wokeifying our kids and women are too emotional. And that's the reason why, you know, you can draw a direct line between, uh, you know, drag queen story hour and women being too emotional. How is it because women like when they see, you know, drag queens reading to kids, they think, wow, our society has come so far that it makes me so happy. It brings tears to my eyes. This would never be permissible 50 years ago. Like, is that why? I mean, I mean this, is, this is such a fallacious argument. This is quintessential conjecture that only an imbecile would be able to fabricate. And who is facilitating all of this? In virtually every case, a woman. 92% of kindergarten teachers are women. 75% of all teachers are women, and 85% of librarians are women. Okay, so that's where he's, he's bringing in some hard data. So because he's established that um, teachers are, are indoctrinating children, and since most teachers are women, well, there's the problem. Makes sense, right? Checkmate atheists or checkmate liberals. I instinctively say checkmate atheists because that was a meme for so long, but we've got to change that. Checkmate libs. Uh... And they are teaching young people to despise their country. The creator of the poisonous 1619 project is a woman. How dare she? How dare she? To feel guilty about their white privilege or to think of themselves as victims if they are black. Even worse, they're indoctrinating them in non-binary thinking regarding, uh, regarding sex and gender. <laughs> These ideas originated in university gender studies uh, and women's studies departments, nearly all of whose professors are female. No stat there, though, so you're going to have to provide us with a citation. Teachers and their unions did great damage to young people during COVID-19. They demanded because of their hypochondria and an apparent inability to apply reason to COVID-19 risk that schools be closed for nearly two years. Teachers unions in big cities threatened to go on strike if schools open. Okay, first of all, you're talking about their fucking supposed hypochondria. More than a million Americans died, you piece of shit. More than one million Americans died due to the global pandemic. And you're just brushing that aside. What a piece of shit. In general, teachers are just radical arms of the Democratic Party and progressive movements. They are overwhelmingly composed of women members and women leaders. The head of the National Education Association is a woman, uh, as there are heads of Los Angeles, Chicago, and New York City teachers unions. So literally his argument is that like there are women teachers and women are, you know, in charge of a lot of organizations. Therefore, 
you know, women are indoctrinating children. Thus, women are being trained to be overly emotional. The argument just doesn't make sense. Like, he's not making any sense here. The points that he's making are easily disprovable because there's nothing to, like, back up this, the, uh, the claim that he's making here. Women physicians and healthcare workers are at the vanguard of ruining young people's lives at children's hospitals that push giving young people puberty blocking hormones and opposite gender hormones, performing hysterectomies and mastectomies on healthy girls who say they are boys and chemically or physically castrating healthy boys who say they are girls. Oh, so it's women physicians as well, right? They're the ones doing all the gender affirming care. First of all, you're just lying. They're castrating healthy boys. Okay. Has Dennis Prager ever condemned circumcision? Because if, if we're talking about, like, mutilation of genitals of children who are too young to consent, um, does he know that more than 60% of uh, young cis boys in this country are uh, circumcised when they're infants? This is an irreversible procedure. Is Dennis Prager going to come out and denounce circumcision? Well, no, because who gives a shit? Because that has nothing to do with, you know, trans people, so... Why, you know, be consistent when you can just demonize trans people and claim that they're castrating uh, young boys? No, actually, you, um, you cannot get bottom surgery until you're 18. Period. And he can claim that genitals are being mutilated, but that's just not true. Uh, and gender-affirming care, puberty blockers, uh, HRT, these are medically necessary. They save lives. So I'm sorry, we should have the freedom to allow parents to make a decision in concert with their doctor and child about what's best for them. Women are at the uh, vanguard of perverting the medical profession. So now, like, he's just straight up making things up, right? Because at first he said, oh, well, most teachers statistically are women. But now he's just like, oh, well, we women, they're the reason why everything is bad in this country. They're at the vanguard of perverting the medical profession. Um, Last week, an organization called Physicians for Reproductive Health published an open letter to the nation's reporters and news editors demanding that they censor anti-abortion activists. We are asking for a commitment from the community of media outlets reporting on abortion to keep in mind the true danger that you present when interviewing anti-abortion extremists. You are giving the opportunity for dangerous lies to spread. First of all, that doesn't seem like censorship. It just seems like they want uh, these news people to fact check uh, forced birthers, which I'd agree with that. Uh, as regards the demand that news outlets censor pro-life individuals, forced birther, really, you're not pro-life, you're forced birther, what you support endangers the lives of women and girls. Um, and the open letter was signed by more than 60 medical doctors and other healthcare professionals. Nearly every signatory was a woman. So I wonder if he took the time to count. If, you know, Dennis Prager walks into a store and he sees that like most of the people there are women, does he automatically assume that that's going to be a bad experience? Like, this is deeply, deeply misogynistic. And what this tells me is that he's got some serious personal issues to work out. You need to not blame women. You need to blame yourself. And maybe you're the one who's being a little bit too emotional. If you're, you're this, like, you have this visceral reaction to just the existence of women. If you're that triggered by women existing... You're the one who's overly emotional. You're the one with the problem, not the women, dummy. So, uh, women clergy. Uh, so, even religious people. If you're a religious woman, you're bad too. Sorry, you thought that you can, you know, uh, win some points with Dennis Prager for being religious. Nope, you're bad too. Women clergy have been at the vanguard of pushing Christianity and Judaism to the left. Uh-oh, can't do that. Can't, you know, adopt uh, any different values to kind of grow at the time so your religion doesn't become relevant. That's bad. Uh, leaving mainstream churches and synagogues increasingly empty. Of course, the increasingly feminized male, cl male clergy go along with their female colleagues. So it's not just the women. It's the men who are feminized because we all know that Dennis Prager is peak masculinity, folks. When I look at him, I think, God damn, that's an alpha. How does somebody even be that masculine, right? And women are disproportionately supportive of cancel culture, the greatest threat to free speech in American history. Again, where's the citation for this? Are you citing polls? He's pulling all of this out of his asshole. 
It should go without saying, but it's undoubtedly necessary to note that there are many women doing great, even heroic things for our society, and that many men are working to wreck it. Oh, so how charitable of him to add that qualifier at the end. But for those who associate women with instinctively protecting children or with being supportive of a traditionally religious life, this era in American history has provided something of a shock. Perhaps that's because mentally you've never left the 1800s. And like, if you're questioning whether or not this is misogynistic because he criticized men at the beginning, substitute women with any other group of people. Just try it. It's very bad, is it not? Beta male, not a beta male.